Someone in the comments said that this was the hardest design to rebuild using auto layout. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to build unique layouts like this one directly in Figma. So let's get into it. The very first thing we need to do in Figma is to create a new desktop frame. Now this is gonna be our first design here and we have to create a new frame inside of here. Just click here and convert it to auto layout using shift and A. Here we can go ahead and convert it to fixed width and convert this to 1200 pixels. So now we have this sort of max width area that we can design inside of. I'm gonna convert the parent here, desktop two into auto layout as well using hug and hug. And now we can see that this is centered, but we need the parent to be fixed. So let's go ahead and do that, 1440. And let's center our element there. Okay, cool. So now we see that anything that we design should be inside of this max width frame here, just so we have everything contained as we have in the original design. We see that there are these hidden rules that we need to follow. So let's go ahead and make sure that we do those. I'm not gonna be designing the nav because I feel like that's a little bit easier. So we will spend most of our time in the body of the content here. So the first thing we're gonna be focusing on is this top text here. We know what we are doing and this little block of text, the participants, and then the images that we see that are stacked in front of each other along with this arrow. So there's a lot of little things that we need to do here. So the very first thing is just simply writing out what we want to have in the text there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste in this text so we know what we are doing and make sure that it is with hug. And now we see that this parent also has a little bit of spacing, so we don't need spacing in these. And let's go ahead and just duplicate that. And we can manually create this space and use something like lorem ipsum to generate a little bit of paragraph text for us. So I'm just gonna use a 16 pixel size for this body text, just so we have it here. So now we've got these two text blocks here. We have the title and then this paragraph, but we see that it obviously needs to wrap and be in the correct proportion. So we need to convert these two into an auto layout using shift A, and we can just rename this to content top left. And we see that it is now filling the entire space of this max width. So we want to go ahead and either just manually with our dragging tool here, we just want to change the size of that text block or that box so that the text can wrap itself. But the text does need to be as fill. Now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this to create the second part here and convert this into an auto layout as well so that we can control the space between the text and this participant's image situation that we got here. So this can be top left content and then the ones inside can be text and this can be images. Okay, so I'm just gonna get rid of this, convert it to participants and I'm gonna make this like eight pixels, maybe 12, something small. I'm trying to use the four point grid here. So we stay consistent with everything that we're doing. And in here, we can just use the circle tool and duplicate that a couple times. So I'm just gonna select all the circles that we have here. And we're going to use this spacing tool here. Maybe we can change the color to make it a little bit more obvious. We've got three something like that. And we see that it is on top, but if we did want to make it on the bottom, so every other image is layered under the last one rather than on top, then we go here and we can change it here. So we see that first on top versus last on top. So that is what we want. Okay, now that we have this, we have to convert this into a circle frame, just to give it a name, just so we know what we're doing. And we're gonna wrap that around another auto layout as well. And every time you wrap something around an auto layout, it will give you the default eight pixel spacing. So you wanna make sure that you do not continue with that because it'll just mess you up. So then this can be the arrow and images. And we can use our direction here to really just change the entire design of what we want. And I'm just gonna be using the default Figma stuff here. I'm not gonna add any custom imagery. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this design will not be exact in terms of the styling. This is more of a tutorial just to get to know how we can use these tools to create something so similar to what we have in the design here. So now that we have the top left done, it's a pretty similar process for the right side here. We have this top left content. So we wanna go ahead and duplicate that, do top right content, and we can wrap those two in an auto layout. And again, every time I'm wrapping something, I'm just using shift and A on my laptop here. And to make sure that this just spans into each side of our max width there, we can go ahead and use the space between spacing mode, make sure that this is fill. So now we have this two blocks here that are spaced equally amongst this max width 
frame. And all we have to do now is just change the content that we see inside here. So I've gone ahead and rebuilt the top right section here just to make sure that we're on time. But let's go ahead and build this bottom part here because I think it's a little bit more complex. Now, the way that we're going to achieve this exact text style here is simply by writing out what we have. So we're going to write in one line WordPress plugin, WordPress developer, dashboard and SaaS, just like this. So we want to go ahead and make sure that we have that content written out. And then inside of this frame, we can use the positioning to make sure that this goes where we want it to go. So if we want it to be in the center, we could do that. But in this case, it has to be aligned with the right side. So we see that we are always aligned with the max width there and we see that we already are pretty close with what we need so here if we can draw a new line we can see that this ends where this starts so let's go ahead and do something about that so the easiest way to do this inside of figma or any flex block kind of situation is simply by adding a little bit of padding to the top here and we can see that we really start to just mold the design to whatever we want it to be so this seems about right to me now we have the top part already done here so i'm going to rename this to the top frame simply like this and we can go ahead and duplicate this because we need a bottom frame as well but make sure that it is still inside of our max width so here i'm just going to rename this to bottom frame and get rid of everything that was in there because we need to pretty much rebuild this here so to rebuild this big header here there's a very simple way to do this so we're going to type in future development company and we're just going to constrain this to the side that we want it to be give it the spacing as well and i'm just going to use the k to make this as big as we need it to be i'm holding down command right now to change the shape of the text block without changing without going too far basically and now to achieve this section here i'm going to do the following i'm going to wrap this around an auto layout and again i'm going to get rid of this eight and eight and i'm going to give it a circle now this circle i'm just creating to get the styling to where we want it to be but we can just paste it here and you'll see that it'll be constrained to whatever side it goes naturally but we can click this absolute position button and it'll allow us to manually change the positioning of where we want it to be now logically you could just do this for the entire site but that's not necessarily the point here we want to use this absolute positioning just to achieve these kind of crazy out of place things and in this case that's completely fine if we wanted to we could also wrap all of these individually in spans or create individual text blocks and then do that whole thing but i think this is an easier way to do that so i'm just going to drag this into the bottom frame here Okay, and we see that we're getting some issue. Let's see what that is. So the issue is that there's only one item in this frame. So as soon as we add this block of buttons here, that will automatically move to the left and then to the right. So we can call this header. So let's go ahead and build this bottom part here. After this, all we need to do is add in this last image and we'll pretty much be done with our example here. If you guys wanna know how I can create this specific design for mobile as well, then let me know because that is an entire other video. So let's get into this button section here. So we simply need to put this into the bottom frame here and let it take care of itself. And then we can kind of understand what we need to do afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and just command C, command V, make a duplicate, wrap those in an auto layout, we can call these buttons. So if we see here, we have a singular button, we have button, button, but this one is kind of in its own column. So an easy way to do this is we have these two buttons here and maybe we can just use eight pixels. So we see that, first of all, we need to span it to the bottom. Cool, that looks good. So now let's go ahead and do that one. So to do that one, again, I'm just gonna use a very simple circle just to not go too crazy with styling, but I will pick the same color just to make sure we're not going too crazy here. So now that we have this top button row, let's rename it to top, and then we can go ahead and duplicate that, wrap these two in an auto layout. So we can say buttons auto layout, move it under each other, eight pixels as well to be consistent. And here we can get rid of this. But what we see that happens is we have the image by itself, right? But we need to have the more button on the right. So there's a very simple fix here. Let's go ahead and create the third button here. And while we're at it, we can create a little bit of padding on the right side, just enough to cover the circle design that we need to have here. And then we can go ahead and change this to be green and the text as well, just like that. So now we see that we have pretty much the same type of layout being created here and we're only missing the main image. So to do that, I've gone ahead and traced this image and we can just go ahead and simply drop it in here, see what happens. So the easiest way to do this with something this complex, this unique 
is to use the absolute positioning in this case. Now, if we wanted to, we could also build it directly into the background of this design. If we go ahead and click here and add an image and do all that, but it's also fine to add it as an absolute image like we have in this case. So now that I'm looking at it, there are a few things that we can improve here. For one is gonna be the sizing of this text. So let's reduce that. And we see that the image here or the circle will also need to be reduced. So we've got that going for us. We also see that we have the same issue where this stops, where this starts. So the easiest way to do that is again, give it a little bit of padding on the bottom, just like that. And you can hold down shift just to make sure that you're in the eight pixel grid, just like that. And then if we wanted to give more space between these two, we can also give a little bit more space between the top and the bottom frame using the parent element here, using max width, just to give it as much space as it needs. So maybe something like that, something like that. I'm just trying to be a little bit perfectionist in this case. Now, one thing that we can do to make this a lot more responsive is this parent element that we have here, this max width, we can also convert it to be a fill for the horizontal resizing and then create 120 pixels of padding on each side. That allows us to be able to drag this and simply create maybe a small desktop, maybe a tablet, and we can see that we can start to make this a little bit more responsive. And if we wanted to, we can go ahead and duplicate this, and we can start to stack these things as we would for mobile. Something like this, maybe move this up, put this background image a little bit more in the center, and we can see that things just start to kind of fall into place where they need to be if we build it using the correct Figma auto layout proportions as we would in this case. Now, if you guys wanna see me do a little bit more than just what I just did right there for mobile, again, let me know and we can go ahead and do that for you guys. So guys, with that being said, take a look at this. We have the original design on the left side here. And if we go into X-ray mode, we can see that everything is built using these logical constraints. Now, a lot of people say that Figma auto layout makes things more difficult. Why don't you just use groups and frames? Well, this is specifically why. If you know correctly how to use these things, it can make it easier to build and a little bit faster as well, rather than grouping everything, making sure that everything is accounted for. If we take a look at the layers here, we'll see that everything is correctly labeled just so that we know exactly what it is that we are using or trying to change if someone needs to come in here and maybe change the header, maybe change the color of the buttons, whatever the case may be, it's easier to know where everything is and to pass off to a developer if you use this type of building system. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week.